years of the 20th century, as the Ottoman Empire was crumbling and the Balkan Wars showed the vulnerability of the Ottoman Empire, the minorities within the greater Ottoman region were discriminated against more frequently. The Ottomans, feeling threatened by other minorities within their empire, started to heavily discriminate against the Armenian population. As the Ottoman Empire was based on a theocratic regime, the Armenians, the first Christian nation who established Christianity as their national religion in 301 AD, were labeled as infidels, or in other words, unbelievers, by the Muslim Turkish nation, and were treated as less than human, or like animals. This increased the conflict between the Turks and the Armenians, and led to random massacres of the Armenians for many years. This theocratic regime provided many forms of disparities and inequalities between the Armenians and the Ottomans, including higher taxes, no legal rights, and the forbiddance of the Armenians to bear arms. In 1908, as the Young Turks took power of the Ottoman Empire, it became more evident that the new leadership was determined to consolidate power through military force. By 1913, the new Young Turk leadership had plans to cleanse the remaining Ottoman Empire of all the infidels, but mainly the Armenian people. World War I was triggered by the assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand of Austria. On August 2, 1914, a few days after the outbreak of World War I, the Minister of War, Enver Pasha, signed a secret treaty with Germany, allying the two military superpowers. This alliance pitted the Ottoman Empire, Germany, and Austria-Hungary against Great Britain, France, Italy, and Russia. Meanwhile, the U.S. President refused to participate in the war until on May 7, 1915, when the British passenger ship, the Lusitania, was sunk by the German Navy. Among the 1,198 passengers on board, 128 Americans were reported dead. This caused major uproar in the U.S. and added pressure for America to join the war and help its allies. The economic ties between the U.S. and its European allies were also putting a lot of pressure on the American economy as much as President Wilson tried to stay away from the insurmountable casualties of American lives, America joined World War I on April 6, 1917, declaring war on Germany. In 1915, the Turkish government started to gather Armenian intellectuals and started brutally killing them. This started the systematic cleansing of all the Armenians throughout the Ottoman Empire by some of the most horrific massacres ever witnessed by man. This led to the first genocide of the 20th century, where one and a half million Armenians, including men, women, children, and the elderly, were butchered and driven to the Deir Zor Syrian desert. Most died along the way at the hands of Turkish soldiers. Turks were slaughtering the Armenians like animals. Came back to the villages and started gathering up the families uh, uh, and taking them forcibly out of their homes. And on, on, under the guise of being uh, uh, taken to safety because World War I was beginning, uh, they, in fact, were being taken to what has become known as the uh, death march for the Armenians across the uh, Syrian desert. Woodrow Wilson was the 28th president of the United States of America. He was a very intellectual man that dreamed that all conflicts would be settled peacefully. He was an idealist, theorist, and a pacifist. As a pacifist, he hoped that there would be no war for mankind. As a theorist, he liked to apply his academic theory and knowledge to solve the problem of war. As an idealist, he produced his blueprint for peace in his famous 14-point summary. The Armenian Genocide had a profound impact on President Wilson. The guilt of not stopping or being able to circumvent the Armenian Genocide, where one and a half million innocent victims were unknowingly slaughtered along with the atrocities of World War I, gave him the idea of creating the League of Nations and a Department of Peace, 
which was a radical thought at the time. Now, unfortunately for Armenians, Woodrow Wilson, uh, in many ways, was a militant idealist. He had great ideals. People had to have self-determination, uh, decide how to live their lives. Uh, but he was uh, not a uh, bipartisan politician. President Woodrow Wilson articulated a principle of national self-determination in which small nations would be granted independence from old empires. The Treaty of Severus reinforced the fact that the dissolution of both the Austria-Hungarian and Turkish empires granted independence to all the oppressed nationalities, including the Armenians. The twelfth point of Wilson's fourteen points, which influenced all the peace negotiations at the time, spoke directly to the Armenians. The Turkish portion of the present Ottoman Empire should be assured a secure sovereignty, but the other nationalities which are now under Turkish rule should be assured an undoubted security of life and an unmolested opportunity of autonomous development. This treaty required that Turkey recognize the Armenian Republic and allowed President Wilson to set a boundary between Turkey and Armenia within the four eastern Ottoman provinces of Trebizond, Erzurum, Bitlis, and Van. The Treaty of Sevres met with immediate failure because Mustafa Kemal, the Turkish nationalist military leader, was furious at the Turkish leader, the Grand Vizier, Damad Farid, that had ratified the treaty, and instead they invaded the Armenian territories and had his government pass a resolution forbidding the Armenians to return to their ancestral homelands. At that time, uh, that looked very promising. It looked like as if um, you know, the 1.5 million Armenians that had been killed, uh, they were the price for what was going to be sustainable and independent in Armenia, that at least the survivors, at least the people who were, who were around could go back there and, and create a country that was going to be protected by the United States, part of Woodrow Wilson's plans. This failure directly contributed to dramatic historic consequences as Turkey continued its genocidal acts against the Armenian population. To this day, Turkey denies the genocide of one and a half million Armenians and considers it a crime to talk about the Armenian genocide. Genocides continued to happen through the 20th and 21st centuries. For example, in World War II, a mere 20 years later, Adolf Hitler famously stated, who, after all, speaks today of the annihilation of the Armenians. Treaties between nations are based on legal frameworks. They are meant to ensure peace or to right the wrongs of man. When they take effect, they propel the peaceful causes of mankind. When they fail, they have dire ramifications and horrible long-lasting consequences. The Treaty of Sevres is a perfect example of failed diplomacy as this treaty was never implemented or enforced. This failure caused harmful repercussions that are still felt to this day, resulting in the perpetrators of mass crimes against humanity to continue to go unpunished. <laughs>